Today we are going to talk about how to solve rational expressions covering 9.6 in the book. All right, so to solve, there's two different methods that we're going to look at. The first one is when we have more than one fraction on one or both of the sides. When we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation to get the LCD, the least common denominator of the terms. So this is just like when we are adding fractions, which we've done already. Then we're going to simplify and solve the resulting polynomial equation. As I said before, this method is best used when you have one or more term on one or more of the sides. So here we have two terms on the left hand side. So in this case, I'm going to use the LCD method. I want to find the least common denominator. The only tricky part is it's not just of these two pieces. I want to find the least common denominator of all three. If there's four terms, of all four. So if my number is 3, 6, 4, the least common multiple between all three numbers is 12. If the least common denominator is 12, we've got to make all of our pieces 12. So our first piece is missing a factor of 4. So we multiply top and bottom by 4. Our second one is missing a factor of 2. And our third one is missing a factor of 3. So that becomes 4x over 12 plus 2x over 12 is equal to 24 over 12. Now the nice thing about the LCD method is once you get a common denominator, all we're going to do is cross it out. And we're going to take the numerator as our new equation. So our new equation is 4x plus 2x is equal to 24. 4 and 2 gives us 6x equals 24. Divide by 6 and x is going to be equal to 4. You can only cross out the denominator in this one particular case when you're using the LCD method and you've got the same denominator for all of them when you are solving. Don't just cross them out when we're multiplying and adding and so forth, only when we're solving using the LCD method. What you don't want to forget is to check to see if your solution works or not. When we are solving these rational equations, there are extraneous solutions, solutions that aren't necessarily going to work. So if we get x is equal to 4, just remember anytime you check a solution, you're always going to go back to the very original equation, not to any of the altered equations, because if you alter something wrong, your check isn't going to necessarily match up. So we've got x over 3, that's 4 over 3, plus x over 6, 4 over 6 is equal to 8 over 4. You can do this in your calculator. I just found the LCD between these two, which would be 6. So our second piece doesn't have to change. Multiply the first pieces by 2. 8. 8 plus 4 is 12 over 6. 12 over 6 reduces down to 2. On the right hand side, 8 over 4 is 2. So we found that our solution of 4 is going to be our solution. It does work. Now that's our first method. Our second method is cross multiplying. This method is going to be best used when you have one fraction on each side of the equation. If I look at number two, I don't have one fraction on each side. Well, I have one fraction, but I have more than one term. You're only going to cross multiply when you have one fraction on both sides or one term on both sides. Sometimes you don't want to overlook the obvious though, and I can easily move that 4 over and be left with 8 over x plus 2. 5 minus 4 gives us 1. Now you can use the LCD method or the cross multiplying method in any single equation. You don't have to use one or the other. There's always the, just the suggestion. Given a certain setup, one is going to be easier than the other. But if you're using the LCD method, regardless if you have one term or ten terms, you need to get the least common denominator. If you're using the cross multiplying method, regardless of whether you start with one or two terms again, you have to get one fraction on the left, one fraction on the right. So I could start with more than one, I just have to make sure that I put it into the correct format. That's why I say if you have more than one, go with the LCD. If you have just one term on each side, go with cross multiplying. Again, you can use either one that you want. All right, so we're going to start the cross multiplication. We've got one fraction here. I can easily turn that into a fraction by putting it over 1. We cross multiply. 8 times 1 is 8. 
and then we've got this expression so we would have to distribute one is going to make a difference x plus two we move our two over and we've got x is equal to six just like before we want to make sure that we check our solution going back to the original equation so we've got eight over x plus two so six plus two plus four is equal to five six plus two is eight eight over eight is just going to give us one plus four five is equal to five therefore x equals six is going to be our solution all right let's go ahead and flip over to the back side as i said before you can use whichever method you like better but one method will be easier than the other depending on the setup that you are given regardless of the method that you use you have to check for extraneous solutions when we look at this setup for number three we've got one fraction on the left one fraction on the right for me the easiest is going to be cross multiplication because of the setup i've got one fraction left one fraction on the right anytime you have more than one make sure that you, more than one term you've got to make sure that you put parentheses around so that you distribute so we've got two times the quantity x minus one is equal to one times the quantity x squared minus x so we've got two x minus two is equal to x squared minus x we know at this point since we see the x squared we're going to factor if we're going to have to factor we're going to use zpp which means we need it set equal to zero so we move all this stuff over when we move this over we become a negative 2x that gives us a negative 3x add the 2 so we've got x squared minus 3x plus 2 we've got our regular factoring so we're multiplying the outside adding to the middle and two numbers that are going to multiply to a positive 2 and add to a negative 3 are a negative 2 and a negative one. So we've got two possible solutions when x is two, when x is equal to a positive one. We need to check both of them. Again, we're gonna go back to the original equation. So we've got two over two squared, which is four minus two, is equal to one over two minus one. Two over two is equal to one over one one is equal to one. When we check one, we've got two over one squared is one, minus one equals one over one. We see that we have zeros on the bottom. When we have zeros under, remember we've got undefined. If it is undefined, it is not a solution. So for number three, we only have one solution when x is equal to two. We move on to number four. When we look up the setup at number four, I've got one fraction on the left, I've got two terms on the right. I can't easily move that three somewhere else. Since I don't have one piece left, one piece right, I'm going to use our LCD method. When I look at the bottom, this can factor to be x plus one, x minus one, difference of two squares. So in this case, our LCD is going to be x plus 1 and x minus 1. Our first piece is missing x minus 1. Our second piece isn't missing anything and our third piece is missing everything. And remember what I would do to make things easier so you can combine things together is since we're missing everything on the third piece instead of multiplying by x plus 1 and x minus 1 we're going to foil that out and multiply it by the x squared minus 1 it'll make it easier as we're multiplying. So our first piece, we've got two binomials, so we FOIL. That gives us 4x squared minus 4x plus x minus 1 all over the x minus 1, x plus 1 equals, we're not multiplying anything there. We already had everything that we needed. And in our third piece, three times x squared is three x squared. Three times negative one is a negative three. Now that we have the same denominator, we can go ahead and cross it out. 
on top on the left, we combine like terms. 4x squared, negative 4, positive 1 is a negative 3x minus 1. On the right, we've got 3x squared, 12 minus 3 is 9. We have our x squared. I'm always going to move it to the, the, it stays positive, so I move the 3x squared to the left. I subtract that 3x squared. So that's 1x squared minus 3x. We move the 9 over. That's minus 10 equals 0. We are looking for two numbers that are going to multiply to the outside add to the middle. Those two numbers are a negative 5 and a positive 2. So we've got two possible solutions. x is equal to a positive 5 and x is equal to a negative 2. We go to our checking step. We plug 5 in. On top here we've got 5 times 4, so that's 20 plus 1, all over 5 plus 1, which is 6, equals 12 over x squared, so that's 25 minus 1, plus 3. That gives us 21 over 6 is equal to 12 over 24, plus 3. 12 over 24 is 1 half plus 3, that's 3 and a half. Over here this can reduce down by a factor of 3, so that's 7 halves. 7 halves is 3 halves, so that solution is going to work. 5 is going to be our solution. Let's go ahead and check number the negative 2. So we plug a negative 2 in. 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8 plus 1. Negative 2 plus 1 on the bottom equals 12 over negative 2 squared is 4 minus 1 plus 3. That gives us a negative 7 over a negative 1 is equal to 12 over 3 plus 3. Negative 7 over negative 1 is a positive 7. 12 divided by 3 is 4 plus 3. We get 7 equals 7. So in this case, we have both of our solutions working, so we have two solutions. All right, we have one more problem left for our notes, number five. And I want you to press pause, and I want you to try number five on your own. So go ahead. All right, if you did this one correctly, there is a chance that you may have thought you were doing it wrong because you did get no solution for your answer. As I approach number five, I see that I have three pieces. I have two pieces on the right. That's going to lead me into using the least common denominator method. If you use cross multiplying, you should have still ended up with no solution. The least common denominator here is going to be x plus one. The only piece that's not with the same denominator is the four. So we multiply top and bottom of that fraction by x plus one. After that, we cross out the denominator once we get the least common denominator. We move the 4 over, we get x is equal to a negative 1. When we check negative 1, we get two undefined pieces, which means we do not have any solution, because the one possible solution we had didn't work. All right, so as you're going through this method of solving, just remember you have to go back to those resources of how do I add fractions together? How do I get a least common denominator? How do I cross multiply? How do I factor? So you've got to make sure that you're always paying attention and following all of the rules. Alright, and that's it for today.